I am inside a nanotechnology laboratory in the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Nanotechnology is a frontier technology for the 21st century. At IIT Delhi, they have made several products using nanoscience and nanotechnology. On this episode, a look at how IITs have dealt with R&D during the pandemic and how nanotechnology is being used for the betterment of humankind. As they say, small is beautiful. I am at a very iconic location. I am inside the Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi. One of India's modern temples. And I have with me Professor V. Ram Gopal Rao. He is a nanotechnologist and the director of the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. On this episode, we explore how IITs are coping with the COVID-19 pandemic and the future of nanotechnology. Thanks a lot for finding time with us, uh, Professor Ramgopal. What makes IITs unique? So IITs, uh, at IIT Delhi, if you look at, it was started in 1961. And uh, before that, there were four other IITs. That way, this was the youngest IIT created uh, after independence in those first uh, 19, 6, 1955 to 1961, that is the time yeah. when many of these IITs got created. And uh, I think the most important thing about IITs is the governance structure. Mm -hmm. And that ensured a level of autonomy for IITs, which you find completely missing in the university system. Mm -hmm. There is a board of governors, there is a chairman, and all matters are decided by the board of governors. Mm -hmm. But what about teaching? How did, how did online teaching go on? And how do you do practicals online? So that these are uh, so then uh, around that time in May, June, within a month time, we were able to move all of our curriculum to online uh, instruction. Every semester, IIT Delhi offers about 600 courses. So that was a massive task to make uh, all uh, lecture material available online. So we conducted uh, sessions for our faculty. Because many of them, you know, are good classroom teachers. Mm -hmm. These are all like, you know, Tendulkar going to the field and playing uh, cricket. But then you make Tendulkar, you know, do some advertisement and mm -hmm. play in a studio. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the whole uh, thing is lost. Mm -hmm. And that is a challenge. So how do we make some of our best teachers also become equally effective in the online mode of education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is where we devised methods. We we may gave a lot of mentorship kind of uh, uh, courses for them. We have for the faculty. For the faculty. Wow. So we have an educational technology and services center ETSC, and that center took it upon themselves all these aspects of not only the technology uh, related aspects but even the training aspects for the faculty. So our faculty were able to orient to the new normal, uh, the online teaching. And uh, so we were able to seamlessly move into the online thing. So things have become better. But what and about better. practical? See, engineering is a hands-on area. So one of the things we initially thought was, you know, because these are all things which are constantly evolving. When we closed down the institute, we were hoping that in summer we can get the students back and then conduct all the practicals mm -hmm. for them in a concentrated way over two weeks, whatever happened, whatever usually would happen over a semester. So that was the idea. But that did not take place. So one batch of students went away without uh, doing enough of hands-on kind of a work. Mm -hmm. But uh, even now, for the current batch, we are still keeping the those who are not graduating. For them, we are keeping the practical sessions in abeyance, mm -hmm. meaning when they come back here, they can do. we will uh, have two weeks of intensive practical sessions where they can go to labs and finish all the experiments kind of a thing. 
and uh, but phd students and others who need laboratory facilities they are coming back you know, except for a brief period mm -hmm. now they are all on the campus whoever needs the uh, practical aspect whoever needs to access the experimental facility so that is one thing which we have done but the but you know teaching happens or learning happens in three different ways in an iit system one is the classroom teaching uh, that is one third of the total learning process that we have been able to effectively move to the online thing the other aspect of learning is the peer learning correct these are all residential campuses everybody stays together they spend more time together in the hostels than in the classrooms lot of learning happens there that is completely missing so therefore that cannot be replicated by any online method the third way students learn is by going to the labs and doing with hands on kind of a thing that i would think uh, we are at least just 10% effective maybe because we demonstrate things online and show them things online it's not the same thing not know. the same touch and feel not the same touch and feel so therefore the teaching part of it has happened effectively but this peer learning component is missing and then the practical aspects are missing so uh, i don't think anybody is happy with this situation if you ask our students you know students are desperate to come back to the campus and they are missing the campus life the the all the buzz that happens uh, on the campus and uh, you know i receive every day so many messages saying when are you opening when can we come back and that sort of a thing even parents want their children to go to the institute and but these are you know difficult times we are all trying to do the best possible uh, but i hope uh, you know in the next couple of months in fact we have already started the onboarding process the students are now coming back uh -huh. every day uh -huh. and uh, but i hope in another 2 3 months the uh, campus life will resume and things will become normal so but we are keeping our fingers crossed let us see how it uh, with the iconic building behind me there is one question which is or comes to my mind and comes to the mind of everyone sir how many unicorns and how many millionaires in dollars and rupees and crorepatis have iit delhi produced and can you name one or two especially from the brick and mortar world yeah. iit delhi has traditionally done very well on, on in the entrepreneurship space the reason is simple you know why what is that iit delhi has done differently compared to other iits i would think nothing significantly different but we are in delhi therefore we are connected with the with the ministries more closely and ministries deal with the societal problems so students and faculty automatically get exposed to the mm -hmm. societal problems much more than an institute which is sitting far away from delhi that is one positive thing the second thing is that students who come to iit delhi particularly are mostly from the business community mm -hmm. you know these are all you see every second student or third student on the campus will be a mithal or an agarwal or a bansal or you know those kind of people the marwadi banias as they say so because they were the ones who uh, who have a traditionally that business kind of a uh, sense in their families and uh, and uh, they also went to the best kind of institution schools and uh, they were naturally the ones who came to iit delhi Uh, into the undergraduate programs or even to the postgraduate programs and uh, and as a result uh, even after a degree i think that that sense of doing business that those things were all there in their dna and many of them became entrepreneurs and uh, in fact according to some of the data i know half the unicorns which are created by indians anywhere in the world either in india or in us or anywhere have come out of iit delhi alumni Wow. half of the total unicorns from indians have come out of just iit delhi alumni the reasons are what i mentioned and uh, many of them are in the e-commerce space because at that time the flipkart for example yes. changed the entire scene for e-commerce in the country and uh, and similarly zomato you take for the food industry in the us for example sun microsystems was an iit delhi alumnus uh, vinod kosla and uh, even now there are there is app dynamics and many other uh, you know technology uh, unicorns are in the us by iit delhi alumni in india there are successful technology companies by iit delhi alumni but they are not yet unicorns the unicorns that you see which have come out are all in the e commerce and sure. uh, business model innovation digital world yeah, the, i would call the more of a business model innovation sure. so there uh, they have done uh, pretty well and uh, in fact they have set a trend in the country now so i think uh, it's a matter of time i mean there are uh, companies like vehant you know and uh, so critical all of them are technology companies 
but uh, they are not at uh, unicorns and i am confident it's a matter of time before uh, you know they turn into unicorns you you mentioned the coming together of lakshmi and saraswati and your own area which is nanotechnology is where you have yourself done well let's go into your lab and talk about more about nanotechnology We are in the nano research facility. What is nanotechnology? Nano is all about dealing with very small dimensions. If you check any Google or any any web page, you will see one billionth of a meter. But you know how much? How small is one billionth of a meter? You know, if you take that, your fingernails grow, let us say, one millimeter in one month, mm -hmm. right? Now, one millimeter in one month, you back calculate, find out how much time does it take for your fingernails. to grow by 1 nanosecond 1 nanometer 1 millimeter in 1 month 1 nanometer how much time does it take for your finger nails if you calculate you see that that time is about a few seconds oh so when you are talking about nano you are talking about how how much your finger nails grow in a few seconds in 3 or 4 seconds that is nanotechnology so therefore you are dealing with dimensions which are at that time at that length scales now why do we need to go to those length scales we have all these materials in the periodic table mm -hmm. right now these materials when you keep on making the particle sizes smaller and smaller synthesize them with smaller and smaller particle sizes they lose their bulk properties the new science takes over and that is where the quantum mechanical effects become very prominent and these materials in some cases show difference in optical properties show difference in mechanical properties in some cases electrical properties to the same materials we know their bulk properties which is what we read in the textbooks but in the nano scale they show completely different properties because of the new science which comes in which is mostly the quantum mechanical effects which come in and changes in all dimensions of these properties we therefore you have new properties now for the same materials now the question is can we make use of these changes in properties to develop new applications which otherwise you know could not have been done with the bulk properties of these materials therefore new properties new applications and these applications can be in very diverse domains you know you can talk in security areas or you can talk in healthcare applications the targeted drug delivery go inside the lab so we are entering the actual nano technology lab we are inside the laboratory in iit delhi where nano technology and nano science is being explored a uh, professor rao you spoke about the technology the way it does in nature do we see any place where nanotechnology or nano science is depicted there are many places where uh, nature uh, uses nanotechnology very effectively one common thing you know one would have noticed is the lotus leaf the lotus leaf always looks clean and even you put a drop of water you know no water sticks to that माने कमल के पत्ते पे कमल के पत्ते पे सो दैट्स द द हाइड्रोफोबिक इफेक्ट द सुपर हाइड्रोफोबिसिटी ऑफ द लोटस लीफ दैट इज वन एग्जांपल वेयर पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू रिप्लिकेट यू नो द सरफेस ऑफ अ लोटस लीफ ऑन लेट अस से द कार विंडशील्ड इफ यू कैन हैव अ सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ कोटिंग्स ऑन द कार विंडशील्ड यूजिंग नैनो स्ट्रक्चर्स रिप्लिकेटिंग द व्हाट द नेचर डज नाउ इमेजिन यू नो ड्राइविंग अ कार इन हेवी मानसून वेयर नॉट अ सिंगल वाटर ड्रॉप विल स्टिक टू द विंडशील्ड you know the, the the that is one advantage or even the butterfly you know the mm -hmm. or the, the, all of those uh, the uh, colors of a butterfly colors of a butterfly wow. the optical properties yeah. they you know can we replicate them in uh, in the man made kind of thing so there are lots of such applications and even the human nose 
right so we are able to smell and uh, for example just imagine you know developing an electronic nose kind of an application using the nano structures and uh, now uh, when you develop an electronic nose you imagine the sensitivity of that electronic nose to be much more sensitive than the human nose like a dog a sniffer dog right then whatever a sniffer dog can perform those functions can be done by an electronic nose you 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 yourself have developed something which is called a nano sniffer tell us about this and what can it do yeah. for example at iit bombay where uh, i was a professor uh, for a long time so one of the things we were working on was an electronic nose platform for explosive detection our uh, major effort was to you know replicate an a dog's nose uh, in a electronic form and so we were trying lots of applications lots of you know variety of methods for doing that and one of the things we felt was uh, uh, you know can we look you have nano materials and whenever you have a material there is a vapor coming out of these materials and if you can uh, detect those vapors you know in the in the parts per billion kind of a level mm-hmm. parts per billion is like you know if india's population is over a billion you are detecting one, one or person two. one or two Correct. people out of the india's population that is the kind of a sensitivity uh, these systems so have. this is this is what an electronic nose this is an electronic nose platform it will go to that level in the near future but right now it can detect particles of explosives uh-huh. down to 20 nanograms okay. that is what it can do it uses a very interesting principle what it does is it has a tiny micro heater and uh, what it does is it collects these 20 nanograms of this material collected through a swipe or other kind of methods and it actually causes a nano explosion it collects these nano particles it explodes them and because these are all explosive materials when they explode they release a certain amount of energy and that energy causes a change in the temperature they detect those tiny changes in the temperature because of the nano explosion which is happening due to the 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 these explosive materials being present on the body or somewhere which are collected through a swipe so this is a technology developed by the company who incubated nano sniff at iit bombay and from iit delhi there is another startup another company vehant technologies so they are marketing this product now it can detect 20 nanograms of this material and it's a completely disruptive technology there is no equivalent of this technology anywhere in the world wow. it is protected by an us patent it is protected by a UA, european patent and it is uh, in terms of bill of materials or in terms of consumable cost it is at least one fifth the cost of what you see at the airports at the airports you have this mass spectroscopy based yes, the raman spectroscopy raman based spectroscopy kind of systems for explosive detection this can replace all of it and it can go down to the same level of sensitivity and with a one fifth the cost of uh, uh, doing the same detection so this is a technology which is now marketed by vehant uh, we have with us mr pankaj shukla who works with vehant technologies can you show us what this machine does we have a demo swipe uh, like rdx and uh, click on verify button and verification uh, in progress is uh, traces detected Detect- detecting petn and rdx uh, uh, so professor ram gopal how many different types of explosives can it detect eventually every airport in the world not just in india should have a technology or will have a technology like this and it's a very unique disruptive technology in the explosive detection space that has become possible because of these micro structures you know the nano level of uh, detailing that has been done here professor ram gopal it is a new technology which is nano technology and many people say there is a it can cause harm in the environment while you are talking of the benefits is there need for some kind of a regulation around nanotechnology the problem with nanotechnology is because of the particle sizes they can go through the skin pores and en- directly enter the blood stream and many of these materials because their properties are changing at the nano scale you know many of them also tend to become toxic mm-hmm. they may have been safe in the bulk form but in the nano form can acquire new properties which can make them toxic so they entering the blood stream the long term effects of nanotechnology are still unknown so therefore there are precautions that need to be taken when while handling these materials 
So is the future bright for nanotechnology? The future is very bright. You know, security applications, you are seeing the, the technology Life already coming into market. The healthcare, the cancer treatment can happen with nanotechnology. Already many drugs have been licensed. Many drugs are in the market right now. The targeted drug delivery where the nanoparticles uh, attached to the drug go on targeting only the cancerous cells without any side effects. So cancer treatment is possible. So the, the, the agriculture, in fact, the IFCO has come up with a product now, Nano Urea, which yes. is now in the market. Yes. India is the first country to have developed nano-based fertilizers, those formulations. Uh, Professor Ram Gopal Rao, you have also worked on smartphones and how nanotech can help in smartphones. Tell me a little bit. Yeah. Now, when you look at nanotechnology, it comes in two forms. One is a top-down technology. You take large devices, keep on making them smaller and smaller. That is where the mobile phones use the standard technologies to and in smaller sizes. The other one is a bottom-up technology where you start with molecules and build larger systems. So, in mobile phone case, when you make these devices smaller and smaller, they become very leaky. They, they start consuming a lot of power. And they, you know, but on the other hand, mobile phones, you want them to become faster. You want them to do more and more functions. So how do you do so many more functions without, uh, you know, affecting the battery? By improving the energy efficiency, can you perform more functions? That is where most of my work has been in inventing new types of transistor structures and in, uh, you know, in developing various uh, kind of technologies where you can put, do multiple functions using a standard mobile phone chip but without consuming too much of battery power. So that is where I have I worked with many industries for uh, so developing those technologies. Smarter smartphones. Smarter smartphones. Thanks a lot for speaking to us, Professor Ram Gopal. A pleasure speaking to you and learning about how IITs are doing well even during COVID-19 pandemic and to see an electronic nose in action and your suggestion that the future of nanotechnology is bright. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Nice talk. Thanks. On this episode of Life and Science with Pallav Bagla, we saw how nanotechnology is benefiting mankind. As they say, small is beautiful. Keep watching. India Science.